the tall grass blows in the wind as the city returns back to nature. Long live the former industrial powerhouse that is Detroit, Michigan. I begin the video at the Eliza Howell Wildlife Refuge. I mean, uh, oops, I mean, Eliza Howell Park. That darn David Attenborough. He's making me mess up. Who invited him anyway? You know what? Actually, on second thought, it kind of does look like a wildlife refuge here. Eliza Howell Park is located on the far west side of Detroit along the Rouge River. Eliza Howell Park is named after nobody other than... Eliza Howell. Bet you never would have guessed that. Howell was a real estate developer, and her family donated this land to the city to construct this park back in 1936. Over the years, the park has long been neglected, and the park has been a popular spot for illegal dumping, drug usage, and other terrible forms of violent crime. The park has also gained a reputation for having a lot of stray dogs, as people will come here to abandon them. But apparently, the park has been getting better recently. At least the grass now is being mowed in some spots, as for a couple of years during the Kwame Kilpatrick days, the city stopped mowing the grass to cut down on expenses. But we all know what Kilpatrick was doing with that quote-unquote saved money at this point. <laughs> And if you're not sure about what Kwame Kilpatrick did to Detroit along with other Detroit mayors and the long track record of Detroit's corrupt city council, make sure to check out my Detroit playlist down below and in it, I have a video where I go all in depth on explaining how Detroit's so-called leaders over the years helped eventually lead the city into bankruptcy. However, in this video, we're going to be seeing the Brightmore neighborhood, which is just east of Eliza Howell Park. It's safe to say that Brightmore has seen better days. This neighborhood has long had the nickname of Blightmore due to the large amount of abandonment seen throughout the neighborhood streets. Today, many of the abandoned homes have been demolished, as most blocks look rather empty. This school that you see here is the abandoned Hubert Elementary School, and we'll drive by it later in the video. Well, this is going to be my 25th video in my Detroit series where I go through the entire city. We'll be staying south of Puritan, west of Evergreen, and north of I-96. And of course, I'll have some extra driving footage of this area of Detroit that I won't end up using in this particular video, so if you want to see more once you're done watching this, make sure to check out the lost footage from my video on my second channel and the link for that will be down below. Well, we're now going to head east on Fenkel, which is the main east and west thoroughfare through Brightmore. Fenkel is the same road as 5 Mile in the Metro Detroit area, as the region has a mile road system in place. West of the Detroit city limits, it's called 5 Mile, while inside the Detroit city limits, it's called Fenkel, although it's still often referred to as 5 Mile. The mile roads are in reference to their location of Campus Martius Park in downtown Detroit, so if you were to draw an imaginary line due north from Campus Martius Park, then Fenkel would be perpendicular to that line five miles north of Campus Martius, and the same would be true for all of the other mile roads north of Fenkel. Meanwhile, along its path through Brightmore, Fenkel Avenue doesn't look so hot these days.
You know, it's sad looking, no doubt, but this is what Brightmore, or Blightmore, has come to. Just wait until later in the video when we drive down some of the residential side streets. Certain streets here are so blatantly empty that you'll be asking yourself at times if we're driving through a scenic route or if we're driving on an actual city street. Anyway, as we continue heading east along Fenkel, Brightmore is a fairly large neighborhood in terms of land area as far as Detroit neighborhoods are concerned. Many of Detroit's notable neighborhoods consist of only a couple of blocks along streets that parallel each other, such as the Arden Park neighborhood or the Boston Edison neighborhood. Detroit isn't like most other large American cities in that matter, as most large U.S. cities have a clear-cut, organized layout of neighborhoods, such as Chicago. With that said, most areas in Detroit are referenced by its proximity to a major intersection, with the exception of neighborhoods such as Brightmore. However, you do have some other large neighborhoods in Detroit that are well-defined, such as Brightmore, and most of them are on the extreme west and north ends of town, such as Palmer Woods, the University District, and others that neighbor Brightmore, such as Warrendale and Rosedale Park. It's kind of funny how Detroit is sometimes, because you can have one residential side street that looks decent, only to head over a couple of blocks and the street will be full of trap houses and empty lots. For example, Rosedale Park, which borders Brightmore and will be featured in my next Detroit video, is actually a really nice neighborhood. Brightmore, however, not so much. Originally, this land was once a part of Redford Township. Brightmore started being developed by an early Detroit real estate developer, B.E. Taylor. Taylor purchased this land back in 1921, and it didn't take long for a community to get platted and developed. By 1926, the city of Detroit ended up annexing Brightmore. Originally, the homes that were built here were built inexpensively and they were intended for the massive amount of people that were flocking to Detroit for the auto manufacturing jobs. For a while, Brightmore was a solid, working-class neighborhood with very little crime issues, and of course, back then, Detroit's public schools were some of the best in the nation. The glory days didn't last very long though, and the neighborhood started to decline around the same time that the majority of the rest of the city did. The riots of 1967 accelerated the white flight to the suburbs, and the auto manufacturers were decentralizing their workforce in the city as well by building newer facilities out in the suburbs. The suburbs were more attractive to both residents and businesses, as the land and taxes were that much cheaper and crime was much lower. Once the 1970s came, crime and poverty in Detroit spiked even further, and Brightmore became notorious for being home to many crack houses for the next several decades, much more so than most other Detroit neighborhoods, especially on the west side. Some people would describe Brightmore as being Detroit's east side neighborhood on the west side, as the east side has historically seen higher rates of crime than the west side of Detroit has. But once all the drugs, gangs, and violence took over Brightmore, it goes without saying that it made residents and businesses, even more so, want to move out of the neighborhood. So you might be wondering why Brightmore has declined so much that people have started calling it Blightmore, but at the same time, you're probably wondering how the nearby neighborhood of Rosedale Park has been able to survive without seeing near as much blight. So basically, drug dealers started to move into all of the abandoned homes in Brightmore back in the day, and they brought a high amount of crime activity with them. 
You can also look at Brightmore as a poster child neighborhood, if you will, when it comes to Detroit's infamous Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween, and historically on that night, arsons would be set throughout the city, as during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, Detroit was full of abandoned homes that weren't being torn down by the city, and because the city wasn't tearing down these homes, residents started to burn them. Detroit for a long time saw more arsons per capita than any other large U.S. city, and a big reason for that was because of the amount of blighted homes. And Brightmore for a long time saw an extremely high rate of arsons per capita. Back in 1970, the census counted 26,000 people that lived in Brightmore, but today, there's only 10,000 people left, and the number continues to sharply decline. That's well over half of the peak population that has left the neighborhood. Some articles say that there's less than 9,000 that live in Brightmore today, but we're going to go with the 10,000 number as reported by Niche.com, which is a pretty accurate all-around website when it comes to these numbers. The median household income is $34,000 per year, and 12% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $46,000, while the poverty rate is 35%. With that said, Brightmore is a part of the larger 48223 zip code, and when you account for the added population, which includes the much better off Rosedale Park, you'll see that the economic stats get a slight boost overall. And that just shows you how much worse off Brightmore is from the surrounding neighborhoods. All in all, the zip code has a population of 25,000 people, and the median household income is $38,000 per year, which is about a $4,000 per year difference from what we saw with just Brightmore. 18% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $75,000, which is about a $30,000 per year difference than what we saw with just Brightmore. Lastly, the poverty rate is less than 30%. Also, you might be thinking that Evergreen Road doesn't look so bad. Well, where we are currently is on the fringes of the Brightmore neighborhood. So to the west, or the left, is Brightmore, while to the east, or the right, is Rosedale Park. This is also the far northeastern portion of Brightmore, and this part of the neighborhood is by far and away the most occupied area. So if you're tired of all the talk and you just want to see the empty parts of Brightmore, then feel free to skip ahead to that part of the video through the timestamps down below. We're now heading west on Puritan, which resembles a residential side street more so than a thoroughfare, and it also serves as the northern boundary for the Brightmore neighborhood. But throughout the rest of this video, we're going to mostly be seeing the residential side streets, whereas so far, we've only really seen the main thoroughfares of Fenkel and Evergreen. And as we head down this street, you'll probably want to head to the comments and say, I thought you said this neighborhood was abandoned. Yeah, this along with a few other paralleling side streets are all the good that's left in the Brightmore neighborhood, so just wait until you see the rest. Yeah, you know what, actually I'll just skip ahead to where we start heading through the empty parts of Brightmore because that's what most of you want to see, and if you want to see the areas that I filmed for this video but skipped over in order to make the video shorter, make sure to check out my lost footage video from this area of the city. That video will be uploaded on my second channel, and the link for that will be down below. So we're heading south on Burt Road past Fenkel, we're about to turn onto some of the side streets, and you're about to see the emptiness that I've been talking about.
And throughout these empty blocks of not only Brightmoor, but throughout all of Detroit, illegal dumping has been a huge problem. People will just come by from all around the region and dump off their trash in an empty part of the city where they think that they can get away without being caught. And the city's been trying to put an end to that, but those efforts haven't yet stopped the problem. We'll see if it continues to be a problem in the future. The grass grows tall while soaking in the sunlight. Man, David, go away. That was completely unnecessary. Actually, on second thought, he's not wrong. This place has literally gone back to nature. Anyone looking for some used tires, possibly for a tire swing? Cause this neighborhood's got plenty. And on this block, there's only a few remaining homes, which just happen to be unoccupied. And couldn't help but notice this neighborhood watch sign off to the left right here. Kind of ironic to see it in the middle of what is mostly empty blocks. It's a little bit less empty as we're north of Outer Drive, but still pretty empty.
And as the road dips, you can see some more piles of illegal dumping off to the left. This street in particular looks like heaven compared to what we just saw. And it's probably a good indicator as to what the entire neighborhood used to look like.
Lastly, I wanted to upload a satellite image compilation of an empty area within this neighborhood to show the decline occurring over the years. We start in 1999, and even then, you can see that there were a lot more homes still standing. Too bad we don't have a Google Street View shot of everything from that time. But as we go on, you can see that more houses continue to get removed, and even trees. Well, I continued my drive around Detroit's Brightmoor neighborhood, and I'll have a second video that will be uploaded on my second channel called Chris Harden's Travel Archives, and in it, I'll upload all of the lost footage from this section of the city, or all of the footage that I filmed but didn't end up using in this particular video, and the link for that will be down below. With that said, I do end the video here. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes, so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Detroit playlist, my American Hoods playlist, or in my Michigan playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!